Hey, welcome to Generative Art with Flutter. This video is a part of a series of videos where I create a small animation effect using Flutter Canvas and show you how to code it up. I'm taking a little break at the seaside these days and on one evening, I saw this moon of the ocean, which was quite beautiful. So in this animation, I'm trying to capture that moment. Let me give you the lay of the land. I'm using the usual code framework we've been using all along. If you are new to this channel, please have a look in the description for previous videos in the series, especially the first in the series on how to set up the Flutter project for custom painter canvas drawing. So in the My Painter Stateful widget, as usual, I have the animation controller and animation set up so that it provides a timer tick for us to update our particles. We create uh, the particles in the create blob field function and update them at each tick in the update blob field. <laughs> what the f is that? I've been using this name for months now and only now I realize that it named this way. Let's rename these functions to something sensible. In the build method, I have a scaffold with custom paint object and a custom painter object attached. Custom Painter gets a list of particles we manage and its job is to draw them onto the canvas. So effectively we have separated out the drawing aspects from our animation algorithm, which is cleaner. If you want to port this to say HTML canvas, all you have to do is to replace the canvas drawing part. We have a few parts in the paint method. First we draw the background. In this case, it is black, and then we draw the particles, and finally we will draw a frame around it. In the particles class, it is minimal. We have position and color properties. We will add more properties as we need them later on. Actually, let's draw the frame first. So here we are in the create particles function. Let's create the stars first. So we loop over and create particles which would form the stars. This is quite simple, actually. Just a few particles with color, radius, and of course, a position. I will set the radius with a random value between zero and four, and the position again, random over the area of W and H. Let's quickly draw these on the canvas. As always, it's a matter of iterating over the particles and drawing circles. We need to bring these particles to the center. So we create a simple offset to add to all particles. This would make sure that our elements stay inside the frame. Okay, now that we have them, let's flicker them slightly to add some realism. This can be easily done with changing the opacity within a, a small range. Uh, great, great. Now let's create the moon which is quite easy. It's a single circle in the middle of the canvas, so we will draw it directly in the canvas itself. Good, but the horizon will be in the vertical center, center of the canvas, I'd like the moon to be over the horizon, so let's uh, lift it up a bit. Now that we have a moon, it needs a bit of jazz. Let's add some glow to it. This is a matter of having a color gradient from the center radiating out. We can use radial gradient function for this.
Let's take a look at the docks and conveniently they have an example how to draw drum roll a sky a sun and the sky quickly copying that over we will convert that to a moon of some sort anyway let me go through the properties of the radial gradient class center represents where to draw in the specified rectangle this is given as a fraction 00, zero being the center the radius tells how far the gradient spreads and again specified as a fraction colors and stops these two lists should be of equal length gradient will create a smooth variation of colors um, specified at the corresponding stops see the docs for more information and to get a better understanding of this just experiment with it all right all right this is shaping up nicely so the next step is to create the waves we start by creating one line of particles and then move them up and down. So easy. So in the most basic form, each particle is created at spaced intervals horizontally. The horizontal spacing is given by WD. Okay, now we see the horizon drawn. Let's add some more life to it. So what we are going to do now is to move the particles up and down smoothly. This is easier if we just store the original location of the particle and then compute the current position by adding a displacement. And here's how we do it. We use pearly noise to give a smooth variation as usual. We could use a two-dimensional function but that won't give a variation as the values are static. So we will use three-dimensional function and set up a particle property called Z which we will increment at each update. All right, all right. Now that we have one wave working, let's add more of them. This is quite easy. We just have to loop over Y with a vertical spacing. So, so here the vertical spacing HD is set to 10, but we can get a nice perspective effect by varying it over each iteration. And there it is, good. Now let's change the radius of each particle with the perspective as well. This means closer particles are larger than the ones further away. For this, we will add another property called RD. This will store the ratio between its vertical position and the total height. Holy crap, that looks like space worms. Let's fix that quickly. There you are. Better, 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 better. One more thing is that when a wave moves up and down, we should change the particle size. This gives a nice effect of the peaks and troughs. Um, we can do that by scaling the RD value by the normalized noise of W. Normalizing means we remap the range from minus one plus one to zero one range. We can add a minimum value so that a particle is always visible. Okay, okay, looks great. You can play with these little parameters to get a good visual effect as you please.
one more thing is that our vertical displacement for dy is static irrespective of the perspective the waves at the horizon should have almost no displacement whereas the waves closer should have uh, visible displacement this adds a bit more realism for this we need to store the hd as a property in each of the particles uh, which is quite easy all right now we have bigger waves close by and minor displacements So the next step is adding colors. We want a color gradient between two colors. The lerp function interpolates between two colors. We want a gradient of colors between peaks and troughs of each wave. Lerp is perfect for this. The normalized noise value we use for peaks and troughs can be directly mapped as shown. Let's create a sensible color set for this. Um, using this website to get uh, it color palettes and there's one right on the first page for gradients of blue i'm going to quickly copy these values in the set to an array and then there's color looks good let's quickly change the sky glow to some shade of blue. Marvelous, marvelous. Now it's almost coming together. Now we are going to add a little bit of shimmering effect. The reflection of the moon over the waves should be something great to have. First is to color the particles depending on the horizontal position. Moon reflection should be centered around the middle region of the canvas. If the particle is in that range, we would assign a color from the color set depending on its wave height. Note that the rest of the particles have only four colors from the darker shades. Okay, this is too robotic. The width of the reflection column is too rigid so we can make it dependent on the vertical spacing because closer particles should have a wider reflection and also make it dependent on the wave height all right all right let's get in there it's more like a painting at the moment but we can add a bit of random noise just to get it shimmering properly nice nice I think we nailed it. So that's the effect. Usually natural looking effects are hard because they are a collection of small effects. Usually we don't pay attention to what's around us uh, that much, but they are incredibly complex interactions of light and matter. So go forth and tweak and create some awesome animations. If you want to share your creations, DM me on Instagram at generative.obsession. Uh, I will leave the details on the description or as a comment anyway that's it for this video if you like what i create please like and share the video and if you haven't already subscribe and enable the notifications to see more of these animation videos thanks for watching until next time